Good afternoon, good evening, or good morning, wherever you are. Welcome to the 10th talk in the inaugural webinar series presented by the International Adsorption Society. The IAS is an international organization dedicated to advancing adsorption as a solution to scientific engineering and human welfare challenges through the promotion of adsorption research and education. We hope that all our attendees, their families, and their colleagues are safe amid the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Today's webinar will be presented by Professor Katsumi Kaneko of Shinsu University in Japan. I'm Arvind Rajendran from the University of Alberta, and I have Nick Wilkins, a graduate student in our group, to help me to moderate today's session. We are required to remind attendees and future viewers that the views expressed by the speaker, host, or other moderators are not necessarily those of the IAS or the institutions associated with those individuals. We ask that you consider joining the IAS as a regular member if you're already not one. Our dues are very minimal, only 20 US dollars per year, but support the publication of our flagship journal adsorption, contribute to travel grants and workshop seat funding for IAS members and affiliated groups, as well as aid the organization of our triennial conference on the fundamentals of adsorption. Members also receive free access to IAS supported materials, including our journal, as well as the adsorption database published by Springer Materials. Anyone can follow IAS on Twitter at this handle that is displayed at intadssos for future updates regarding IAS events, webinars, and information about scientific meetings. Please help expand our YouTube channel by subscribing. During the webinar, questions can be submitted to the speaker either via the Q&A tab on the Zoom client or as comments on YouTube um, uh, channel. These comments will be forwarded to the Zoom hosts. We will address questions midway through the webinar, again, following the end of the presentation. Today, it is uh, a real honor and a pleasure to introduce Professor Kutsumi uh, Kaneko, who is a distinguished professor of research initiative for Supra Materials at Shinzu University. He has been a professor of physical chemistry in the Graduate School of Science at Chiba University until March 2010. He graduated the Master Program of Chemistry at the University of Tokyo in 1971, and he has published uh, more than 520 papers uh, in international journals. He has also received major awards from the Chemical Society of Japan and the American Carbon Society. He has developed nanospace molecular science using a variety of in-situ measurement uh, systems for elucidating the molecular and ionic assembly structures in nanoscale pore spaces. He also showed in pores at super high pressure effect of uh, nanoscale pores and partial dehydration effects for confined ions. And he has also contributed to qu quantum molecular sieving effect and water absorption on hydrophobic carbons, in addition to pioneering contribution to the characterization of nanoscale carbon pores. At this point, I also would like to highlight that Professor Kaneko is one of the co-authors of um, the, the very critical IUPAC report that was published uh, a few years uh, ago. After moving to Shinsu University, his study has shifted to in-pore nanomaterial science in order to challenge new innovations in adsorption and nanomaterials fields. He was uh, the president of the International Adsorption Society from 2004 to 2007. And he's also a fellow of the Royal Society of Chemistry, the International Adsorption Society, and the Chemical Society of Japan. With that, I transfer uh, the control of the screen and the presentation to Professor Kaneko. Kutsumi, it's all, uh, mm -hmm. on to you. You can share your uh, screen whenever mm -hmm. you're ready. OK, just a moment. It's okay. Yep, looks good. Okay, thank you very much, the Arvind. Today I talk on the carbon materials and adsorption. At first, I want to say thank you for arrangements of the IAS webinar series. This is very excellent program for, in particular, for young generations. 
So the Professor and, uh, Andras and Arvind and Dan mainly organize this webinar. Thank you very much. And also I like very much the advanced science, but I cannot manipulate advanced technology. Then today Hideki, my colleague, the support very much this webinar talk. Today, I, at first, I want to explain a little bit my short history in absorption science, then move on nanoporous materials, and I will show you some basics of nanoporous carbons and also physical absorption. Then if I have a still time, I want to introduce recent our research results, in particular, the impor high pressure effect and apparent hydrophobic, hydrophilic transformation and partial breaking of coulombic law for confined ions. Nano wind and also nano windows issues. This is very new subject for me. When I was the university student, I didn't realize I study the absorption because I was very interested in quantum mechanics. Then I proceed to the molecular science. Molecular science need quantum mechanics and solid state science and also molecular spectroscopies. But the, uh, during the master program of the professor Akamatsu, University of Tokyo, just only two years, I associated with the molecular spectroscopic work on organic semiconductors. At that time, I didn't realize Professor Akamatsu studied the carbon when he was young. The, he studied carbons, but he didn't understand the carbon, then proceed to organic materials, highly the conjugated pi organic system. Then he developed the organic semiconductor. Then I just knew that he should be interested in organic semiconductors, not carbon. But when I was the master student, Professor Morozovsky, his, he visited the Professor Akamatsu. I didn't understand why the carbon person the visit the Professor Akamatsu lab. Because the, according to Professor Akamatsu, Professor Morozovsky is the pioneer of the carbon science. He started the carbon conference, still the, that carbon conference continue every year. But unfortunately, this year, the carbon conference will be organized in Kyoto, but the, this virus issue, the uh, very large barrier, then the carbon conference in Kyoto now has been canceled. But anyway, the, I, when I was university student, I didn't realize I should start the carbon study and also absorption study. But the, could you see professor, this professor Samejima, he's a second Japanese professor in Japan. The first one, the professor, another Japanese one, he studied organic chemist. The professor Samejima, the second Japanese professor, he studied absorption on zeolite, but he wrote papers in Japanese, then his work is not known in worldwide. So I have uh, some connection with absorption and carbons, but I didn't realize. Later, the, when I moved to the Chiba, the, my boss Chiba was interested in the oxidation of metals. Then I studied transition metal oxides, electrical properties, about 15 years, then the, I started absorption studies using mainly using the carbons. So I'm just the, uh, started the absorption and the carbon after near around 40 years old. 
but the, I had a very great experience on which is associated with absorption and porous carbon that occurred in 1984. Because my boss, Chiba University, asked me, could you develop very nice reabsorbent for nitrogen monoxide? Probably you know, nitrogen monoxide, one of the harmful the atmospheric pollutants. The nitrogen monoxide ordinarily uh, low concentration situations, long life. And then once reacted with oxygen, convert to NO2, very, very harmful. So we should remove nitrogen monoxide, but no good absorbent. At that time, the, I noticed nitrogen monoxide has the electron unpaired electrons, so logicals. Then I should use such a unpaired electron for fixation for some solid. Then I put the nanoscale iron oxides the, near the carbon pores. At that time, we don't say nano, but at this moment, we should say nanoscale iron oxides and deposit on the entrance on the carbon pores. Then nit nitrogen oxides approach to here, then spin-spin interaction occurs because iron oxide Fe3 plus high, high spin state, then strongly interact the magnetically. Then nitrogen monoxide, the monomer, convert to dimer, NO2, N2O2 dimers. Nitrogen monoxide at room temperature is a supercritical gas, but very difficult to absorb, very difficult to condense in, on the surface or in pore. But once the nitrogen monoxide convert to nitrogen monoxide dimer, NO2, dimer is vapor. So spontaneously, nitrogen monoxide are condensed in small pores. Then th this the behavior changed my life. This the carbon the materials can absorb plenty of nitrogen monoxide, more than 30% of the uh, one gram of the adsorbent, almost corresponding to the silica gel for water. But today I don't mention this because this is very unique, the adsorption in particular associated with the how to as enhance the uh, promote the supercritical gas absorption. Today I don't mention. Very recently uh, we edited together with the Paco Francisco Rodriguez Reynosa the, this nanoporous materials for gas storage. In the two chapters, we wrote some review for supercritical gases. Then you can differ if you are interested in the supercritical supercritical gas absorption. And also, this works give me a great impact because the I challenge to attend this international symposium on adsorption. This is the first experience for me. At that time, my age, very age, 39. This is just a 60s ACS College Surface Science Symposium, at Georgia, at Georgia Tech, now very famous university. And at that time, chairman as the Settle Moyer, he was the ACS president, he loved very much my ordinary just a oral presentation. He mentioned I didn't the memorize correctly, but the uh, he said anyway this is very interesting. Then free of question something. Then my question probably lasts nearly thirty minutes or more. Then program completely changed, but the uh, my English much was at that time, then I had highly strained, but the 
this changed my life. And the uh, several years later, I organized very small symposium, very excellent absorption science, mainly, mainly chem chemistry, chemist gather to Chiba University, for example, former language editor Bill Gill and Ken, he's a representative absorption scientist. Unfortunately, both passed away recently. The uh, Jaloniets and Alex, some are still very active. So this changed my life. And then my students also changed. The many master program students wanted to proceed to PhD program. Then I, my research group become very strong. Then I appreciate this kinds of great the stimulation by international scientists. I want to come to the uh, basic story of the absorption. In such a case, we cannot forget the BET, Brunauer Emmett Teller. Several years ago, I bought very a uh, second the this old the book, but I am very great. Very, very impressive because the very nicely written theory and the very, very nice. But of course, the BT theory not perfect. We must be on this BT. And also later, I want to show a little bit the, we have the now very good the materials, then we can do very model experiment. So we can construct very nice absorption science. The, before we have the very established theory, BT theory, and the, this capillary, classical capillary condensation theory. The, probably you know very well, the, if the concave, the, this liquid interface, in such a case, this liquid, the concave, the surface, molecule, molecule, just the, uh, are belonging to the concave, the border, molecule, molecule interaction much stronger than this flat, the surface, then vapor pressure of the, this, the meniscus, this liquid having this kinds of the concave structure is smaller than this saturated vapor pressure of the flat surface. Then if the the vapor come to the mesopause, the, they, they understand this should be a more stable in liquid state, they condense, the, then capillary condensation occur. This capillary condensation and also BT theories highly established, but the, these are not perfect, then the ordinarily the absorption mechanism depends on the surface structure. The BT theory uh, apply to the some flat surface, but the uh, around 30 years ago, still the their absorption science of, there are so many excellent scientists at that time and very, very nice the sci sciences are published, but the still some limitations not so many well-defined porous materials. One of well-defined the porous materials are zeolites. Others are not so well-defined. And also absorption measurements are not so good because the low resolution nitrogen absorption isotherms just is, was measured because re relative pressure, minimum relative pressure starts from 10 to minus three or 10 to minus two. Even so often the, uh, they must the pretreat in vacuum, but they must expose to the air. So not the uh, idealistic measurement. And also the, at that time, no personal computers at best, just a fitting of the absorption isom to the thermodynamic equations. Very great limitation. In particular, almost no understanding of the structure of the molecules absorbed in pores. 
but the around the thirty years ago, very critical some change occurs. One is the molecular simulations. The, these the professors Bill and David and Keith and Nigel and Nick started molecular simulation and other members started the apply the molecular spread simulation to understand the absorption behavior. And also, the accidentally, the well-characterized porous materials just uh, on the, the stage. One is the mesoporous ordered structure, the silica, and also carbon nanotube. Even the carbon area, the active carbon fibers, which I studied, uh, highly uh, organized compared with ordinarily activated carbons. Now, better, more nice carbons we can use. And also a little bit later, the probably you know, and also already the uh, Philip Larabin, the uh, delivered a good lecture with this webinar on the MOF. MOF also appear on the stage. Then the absorption areas are very, very changed around the 1992. At that time, I just joined, I just the, uh, start the absorption work. At that time, the, uh, in particular, how we can characterize exactly or correctly the porous system, in particular, disorder structure, the carbons, active carbon, porous carbon, how we can characterize well the structure. Then, for example, can the, uh, the apply the, he develop the comparison plot, alpha S plot. Later, the, we the modify, we improved his method because we, measure the adsorption ice sun from 10 to minus six, this range of the information is important for understanding the adsorption in micropores, very small pore. Then we apply the CANS, the alpha S plot to the mesopore, micropore system. And Jean Locro, the uh, study the heat of adsorption and Paco from Rodriguez Reynosa, study the very small pores, less than 0.7 nanometer pores by use of CO2 adsorption. We challenge to understand the, some new aspect in highly small pores. Then we, establish, we construct this super high resolution, the measuring system using ultra-high vacuum system. At that time, we can measure, we could measure the adsorption isom from 10 to minus 10. But in order to get, having the one isoms, one month is necessary because we use more reliable gravimetric method. But unfortunately, the Japan islands was loved by earthquake, often earthquakes, then balance often vibrate, didn't stop for one week something. Then often we took one month for getting one absorption ISA, not so available, the uh, so widely applicable method. But anyway, we challenge and also we we established helium absorption measuring system at 4.2 Kelvin. You can see this equipment's very large one, also gravimetric one. The, the, uh, this is very uh, cost of performance, very bad. The, we had uh, the, some very interesting result, but later, uh, the, uh, for example, Hideki the, uh, showed even the helium is not small. Helium the behaves as a quantum. Then 
helium is classical helium is small, but low temperature helium is a quantum. Then helium refluctuate relatively large, then not fit for evaluation of very small pore system. So this kinds of the work I didn't. Okay, I must finish my short my history. I want to move on to some basic of basics of the absorption. Absorption, the uh, term of absorption still not so established because the uh, related the term is physical absorption, what as absorption and chemisorption and absorption occlusions. The no critical of the definitions, but the my definition is if the molecules or solid the change on the interactions, both of the structure change, those should be occlusions. The uh, this is for example the hydrogen uh, the storage uh, the pal palladiums. In such a case, hydrogen dissociate into two hydrogen atoms and palladium solid change to the this new metal metal frame metallic metal structures. And chemisorption case, the molecules change. For example, if SO2 is chemisorbed on the iron oxide, in such a case, SO2 is convert to SO3, SO3 or SO4, something. But the bulk solid doesn't change, but the surface solids change. Absorption case, the, for example, water is absorbed in polymers, in such a case, water maintain the structure, but polymer change the structure, highly swelled. So this, the primary categories, four categories classification should be useful. Some detail is written in this, the review articles. And Absorption, gas absorption, ordinarily uh, very, very many, many target molecules. Even in atmospheres, we have plenty of very variable of the gases, but ordinarily gases, nitrogen, oxygen, argon, and CH, CH, methane, and hydrogen are super critical. So the absorption at ambient temperature is not so easy, but these are very important molecules. And also these molecules has the, some of the electric polarization structure. For example, very famous case is water. Water is highly the polarized. They have dipole moment. Even the nitrogen, the atomic nitrogen molecules the, they have the quadrupole moment. Even the methane has octopole, or the, the octopoles. Then those, the porous structure, some case associated with the absorption, some selective absorption. So we must take into account these kinds of the, fi find the, some properties, electronic structure of the molecules to get the some selective absorption for mixed gas something. Some case also we must take into account the magnetism or the, I show the nitrogen monoxide case. And also if we uh, start the absorption study, the target is the supercritical gas or vapor we must distinguish. If the target is a supercritical gas, very difficult to absorb on the solid by physical absorption, because physical absorption is the, uh, very briefly speaking, a condensation process. So 
gas must convert to liquid, but supercritical gas cannot be condensed, changed into liquid, even by application of the extremely high pressure, as shown here. Above the critical temperature, the, this area is called supercritical gas, but above the critical pressures, this area is called supercritical fluid. But anyway, the above the TC, it's a very difficult to absorb the gas. For example, hydrogen, still very difficult to absorb the plenty of hydrogen at ambient temperature on porous materials, even the methane. Methane is more promising. Anyway, and this kinds of the fundamental ones already I mentioned. The uh, this the book I just wrote some review article with my some young colleague. Okay, the uh, I want to move on the nanopores. We love very, we need the house in. In Japan, Japanese house are not so large compared with the uh, United States or some country, but the, uh, anyway, we need a house. House has the roof and the walls and the windows and the gate. The porous system has also the, uh, some give, have give us some space and also wall is in particular important and also gate some case very give us some special function and also windows also very important here i will show you some examples the zeolite you know and this order the mesophore silica and this is single roll carbon nanotube bundle form and one of the mof this is not ordered structure of the active carbons but this, this system has the space, nanoscale space, and also walls and uh, some of the entrance, something. And there are plenty of nanopore stories. This is some of the uh, nanopore stories, the zeolites, the, uh, some porous carbons and coordination polymers, MOF, something. The, uh, those of the porous materials has unique the uh, porous, someone, some unique pore structures and some the unique functions. In particular, the MOF has, uh, how to say, uh, very highly designable. So pore with us is a variable and void space is also not necessarily slit shape or cylindricals. A variety of structure is possible. Then the many, many uh, the, uh, scientists challenged to develop the new MOF. But any variety of nanoporous, sorry. But the, we can the, distinguish the uh, two types, the nanoporous materials into two types. One is pillar type, and another one is wall type. Pillar type, the uh, representative one MO, MOF, because MOF the, uh, mainly consists of some uh, the, a kind of log, some one dimensional cylinder, and they uh, have the, some frame. Then the, they, have the, they don't have sufficient wall, but ordinarily the porous material has walls. Then the MOF are good at the, uh, if they uh, want to get the uh, larger surface area, of course, MOF has a merit to get the high surface area, such as 3,000 square meter per gram, something, because the one dimensional structure is the uh, some frame. 
than the more surface area. But the, for example, the, the, here I will show you single row carbon nanotubes. The, in this case, of course, single row, then surface area is bar, large, but not so much the MOF. But the uh, MOF, basically, they don't have strong interaction potential because the wall is very, very narrow. Here, I will show you the reason. Uh, this is the uh, carbon dot the sun the belt. If this carbon dot number is smaller, the uh, here is the, uh, sorry, this interaction between the carbon belt with the nitrogen, nitrogen here. The, the just the evaluate interaction potential with this carbon dot. And here is the uh, carbon dot number, the just on the single case, the this interaction potential is here is zero and minus means uh, negative, attractive, around minus 30, not so much, but around five carbon dot the associate in such a case, around the minus five, 1,500, so become a very large. So the, we, if we want to get strong interaction, we need the some wall, which of which the some width is a little bit some wide. So single lot is not necessarily good. So we must compromise. So probably five lot or eight lot something, a little, little bit narrow wide the carbon, narrow wide some the wall system should be very good for the high surface area and also very high, large, high, very strong interaction potential. So I want to move on the porous carbons, the uh, recently we are studying the main the porous carbons and there are a variety of the carbons, the active carbon fibers, disorder structure, single row carbon nanotube, single row carbon nanophones, single row carbon nanophone, the consists of the uh, not so well the crystalline graphene structure, but the wall, the uh, single wall, the graphene and double row carbon nanotube, something. If the molecules are confined, absorbed in single row carbon nanotubes, this, the molecules interact with the surrounding atoms of the carbon nanotubes, then the molecules are strongly absorbed, strongly attractive. So we want to back to the basics on these issues. Ordinarily, we use the very simple approximations at first, if we have the two atoms or two molecules, these two atoms mutually, uh, if they are some social distance, they attract each other, but they approach too much, the electron wave overlap case, they become repulsive. Then Leonard Jones potential as shown here, the describe such a repulsive and attractive situations. This attractive the force come from the so-called Van der Waals attractive force, uh, the dispersion interactions. If the opposite is, for example, carbon walls, in such a case, they will still the develop this simplify the interactions we often say steel potentials. In this case, this is repulsive, this is attractive. Then the, we can evaluate interaction potentials using these the functions. So qualitatively, I want to explain the, uh, how the interaction, attractive force interaction works for the carbon surface with the molecules. 
this mentions at the monolayer position, the very deep the interaction potentials, very highly negative. But second, secondly, absorbed molecules, the interaction negative, attractive interaction, these levels, not so much, third and fourth, almost nearly zero, five, almost nearly zero. If the target molecules, nitrogen molecules around 0.35 nanometers, in such a case, in order to get some efficient the dispersion attractive force, the case, we need the some nanostructure. One nanometer scale structure is very important for getting the uh, efficient, the effective dispersion attractive forces. In such a case, this carbon structure, the graphene structure is very, very important because this carbon's highly compact structures, then the this graphene structure give the highest the dispersion attractive force per weight and also inert. Then carbon structure is very, very nice friend for adsorption scientists. Very strong adsorption force for molecules and atoms. So carbon is very important. Okay. And also if the uh, some of the surface, carbon, even the carbon surface, often the some this carbon has the surface functional group OH or COH. In such a case, we should take into account electrostatic interaction. In such a case, we should count, we should take into account this electrostatic interaction. Then we can evaluate such, a effect, such a effects by the electrostatic interaction. But in this talk, mainly the, uh, we focus on this dispersion interaction, except for water absorption. Here, I want to show uh, some special case. The, here, I show you the, some special carbon nanoribbons, which was developed by Mauricio Telonos, the Penn State. They have this kinds of zigzag form, very thin form of the graphite. There are so many edges. Edge has a very special, the carbon, the uh, valence state sp3, and then they should have the uh, polar moieties. Then they have the very unique water absorption behavior. Here I will show you the water absorption isom of the carbon black, non-oxidized carbon black. The, uh, and this is the uh, graphite nanorim. Surface area not so greatly difference, but the carbon black cannot absorb the water vapor so much. But the graphite nanoribbons gradually absorb and the, the absorbed water is not dissolved. So they should halfway chemisorbed. So this is a very special case. But the ordinary case, the carbon interacts very weakly. Okay, I must the, uh, just quickly finish. Sorry, it takes time. Okay, the, but the, the nanoporous materials has variety of pore shape, but ordinarily we uh, treat the silicate pore system and cylindrical pores for simplifications. Ordinarily, porous carbon has three shape in very short range, not micrometer range. The carbon nanotube, of course, the cylindrical pores, but they have the uh, bundle structure, the, they have another type of the pores also. Okay, I want to start the uh, graphite slit pore systems. 
the molecules enter in the uh, solid shape case. In such a case, molecule interact both the walls, then the, uh, they have the uh, two interaction potential from the both the walls. Then if the both walls uh, approach each other, in such a case, this blue interaction potential overlap each other to give the dead deep interaction potentials. Then this potential is very, very deep. Some case corresponding to 3000 Kelvins. So the very briefly speaking, in order to dissolve heating at 3000 Kelvin necessary. So very deep interaction potential is produced by the very small pores. Then nanoscale pores have such a very, very strong interaction potential, deep, very strong the uh, ability for catching the storage of the molecules, vapor molecules in particular. Here I will show you the interaction potential change for the nitrogen and graphite slit pore with decreasing the pore widths, this potential minimum deeper and deeper. So smaller pore system has a very deep interaction potential, then giving a very unique enhanced adsorptions. Even the from very, very low relative pressure adsorption start. Possibly uh, much as shows this, the uh, IUPAC, the adsorption representative adsorption ISA, type 1A and type 1B and type 1.5 uh, associate with the adsorption on micropores, very small pores. The micropore is code for the, sorry, I forgot, Micropores, uh, the food width is, is less than two nanometer, very small pores. And because very small pores, the, as already mentioned, they have a very strong interaction potentials, then the uh, molecules want to occupy the sump site in very small pore. So adsorption finish at very, very low pressure, low relative pressure, then just like this. This has a little bit wider pore size distribution than a little bit smooth increase. But this uh, representative adsorption isom of the adsorption isom in micropores. And this is some special case, water adsorption on micropores carbon without oxidation often shows this adsorption isom. But this is not the come from the capillary condensation. An adsorption mechanism depends on the surface selection. Flat surface or and also very large macropore surface, the BT theory can be applicable. The mesopause, uh, representative mesopause. In my case, the, I want to say more than five nanometers should be representative mesopores. Then five nanometer to 50 nanometers, capillary condensation theory can be, can describe the adsorption behavior. And, but the, uh, a little bit small mesopores five nanometer to 1.5 nanometer, little bit large micropores, often shows the very unique adsorption behavior because in this case, the molecule surface interaction important and also molecule molecule interaction important. Then this, the materials still the, uh, many, many scientists the, uh, studying from basic point, fundamental viewpoint. 
and representative of the absorption, so-called micropore filling, absorption starts from very, very low pressure, just applicable to smaller micropores, possibly less than 1.5 nanometer, something. This comes from enhanced molecule surface interaction, which I mentioned before. So vapor absorption in micropores are very important, but the uh, BT surface areas are very, very important, but the, uh, for micropore systems, the, if the pore width is, is larger than 0.7 nanometer, BT surface area is overestimated. In some case, 40% overestimated. Huge overestimation occur. And less than 0.7 nanometers underestimated. Okay. The, here I will show you the reason very a uh, little bit briefly. Because the in order to get the BT surface area, we uh, recently a uh, machine just uh, gave the uh, value, but the uh, basically the machine plotted the uh, data using the relative pressure data in the relative pressure range of 0.05 to 0.35. This is standard relative pressure range. But in this, the standard pressure range, for example, nearly one nanometer per with this case, already monolayers of course formed and also additionally, central absorption started. But if we plotted the, if applied BT plot to this absorption data, this red value, red the absorption amount is the incorporated in the analysis, then overestimation occurs. So this is the reason. Then the, we apply the uh, high resolution alpha S plot. Originally, already I mentioned, can sing the uh, apply this alpha S plot. This S come from sing, can sing. And our, our case, we measure the absorption Einstein from 10 to minus six relative pressure. Then we plotted this kinds of the alpha S plot, then this, the 0.7 nanometer case, almost very exact date, exact surface area is obtained, or 1.1 nanometer also almost okay. From this slope, give the very uh, correct surface area with experimentally and simulations. Here I will show you one example. This is the surface area, the plotted using the different the relative data in different relative pressure range. This is low pressure range 0.005 to 0.101. This is this range. But the if the standard regions, the very huge, this one, very large, but exact one around here. So very highly overestimated. But if the poor width is, is less than 0.7 nanometer, no monolayer absorption occurs on both walls, then underestimation occurs as shown here. So the evaluation of the surface area of the porous carbon should be very careful. Then we propose subtract subtraction or pore effect of enhanced interaction potential method. As we say SP method. This is recommended. In particular, cylindrical pore case. Here, the single carbon nanotube case. This is the uh, BT surface area against the geometrical surface area of the single carbon nanotube. One means the uh, same one. But if we plotted 
the BAT plot using the standard regions, depending on the uh, tube diameters, the uh, some case three times higher surface area is obtained by BAT plot. However, the, if we use the alpha S plot at just on the two nanometer diameter case, a little bit nearly 40% the excess, but the uh, considerably good results. So the, we should be careful for evaluation of the surface area. And also the ordinary case, we cannot the measure the adsorption in ultra micropores whose pore width is less than 0.5 nanometer. In such a case, we must use highly, this kinds of special adsorption measurement. This is very uh, shocking results. The, we measure the non-porous carbon black adsorption, non-porous carbon black nitrogen adsorption using the super wide pressure range adsorption equipments. In this case, adsorption starts from 10 to minus eight. This, the adsorption, this range almost overlapped because the carbon black has a very small pore, 0.4 size nanometers size, but ordinary adsorption measurement cannot measure, but ordinary we just neglect. And also the, I want to say the adsorption state is different from the bulk liquid state. Uh, this work was done by the uh, Hideki. He was the uh, PhD student in Chiba University. Uh, or move, I'm not sure. Uh, here we measure the uh, absorbed state by the rotational, vibrational rotational spectroscopy at the low temperature, near boiling temperature of the methane, 111 kelvins. We confined, we confined in the methane in these nanophones. We donate the nanoscale windows on the graphene wall, then methane uh, incorporate, enter inside, then measure the, these kinds of the uh, vibration rotational spectra at the different temperature. Bulk case, bulk case at boiling temperature, we can observe the very nice rotational structure here, but the confined methane around the boiling temperature, almost no clear rotational spectra structure. And then also even the 130 Kelvin, still 140 Kelvin, not so clear. Then this mentions, this indicates methane rotational motion almost stop in highly confined state. But the, we can observe this, the central vibration peak. This means vibration still, they vibrate, they don't stop but rotations are hindered by highly confined situation. So the absorption states are very different. Okay, sorry, one hour passed, because, so very long, very, very sorry. So I want to have a break, some questions. Yeah, I have um, a question from uh, Marco Manzotti. Uh, so, so Marco says, thank you, Katsumi, for a very oh. simulating uh, talk. Uh, what would your material of choice be if you want to selectively adsorb methane, for example, against nitrogen? Nitrogen. Oh, sorry, Marco, I don't experience. Recently, uh, we developed the uh, very new type of separation membranes using graphene that can separate relatively easily 
methane nitrogen. The uh, separation rate nearly 100 times faster and selectivity around 50, still not sufficient. But the, uh, we don't study, but the, uh, basically the methane at ambient temperature, methane is more strongly interact, then the size is not so different, then the, if probably methane doesn't interact with surface functional group, if you have the, uh, for example, carbons at the entrance, some surface functional group should be modified, should be attached. Then the nitrogen should be interact at there, then methane more easily absorbed. And also the, not so easy, but the, uh, at the entrance should be a little bit shrink. Uh, entrance should be a little bit narrow is better, I think. So in, in this case, so the separation is still because of uh, interaction, not because of uh, sieving, not because of the size. Uh, in, interaction, interaction so, okay. together with interaction. But sorry, Marco, later if I have a good idea, I will send you an email, sorry. Yeah, thank you. Um, I have a, uh, another question um, from Bubesh uh, from YouTube. Um, is the adsorption capacity of a microporous material governed by the volume or the surface area? Oh, basically uh, evaluated by microvolume. That is better. But the uh, microvolume is not so popular in such a case, the uh, together with the surface area should be described. That is better. Because surface area, for example, the 1.1 or 1.2 nanometer per with case, the surface area just only show the surface area of the both side both side of both side of walls. But the micro power volumes shows the all total volume, available volume for vapors. So showing the real potential for absorption. But the target molecule is, is not so strongly interacted with the micropores. In such a case, the monolayer interaction is necessary. In such a case, surface area is good indication. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I have a question myself. Uh, so when you showed the experiments where you could go to very low vacuum conditions, mm -hmm. um, where you had the P over P naught against uh, the mm -hmm. insolved amount. Um, so one is what was special about the equipment? Was it uh, just that it was a better vacuum pump or was there more challenges? Mm, to go sorry. To low vacuum? <laughs> We uh, <clears throat> constructed special equipment. Then the, at this moment, be, because we uh, use the ultra high vacuum systems, the uh, baking uh, is available. Then uh, very cost, the high cost, and then it takes time for preparation for starting measurements, something. So not so popular usage. And, and, and um, what explains the shift between the two curves? Oh yeah, that is, uh, if we, we measure the high TM image, the, we can observe the, uh, some small folds between the outermost surface and second layers. Then the, those, the some small folds just uh, possible for introduction of the small amount of the nitrogen molecules. Then mm -hmm. the, those the molecules can be absorbed in the just uh, underneath some space, then finish. Then the, those the already 
gas as absorbed carbon black work as a non-porous the graphite surface. So then step appears. Excellent. Okay. I have okay. Uh, two more questions. So mm -hmm. one from uh, Nick Wilkins, and this was a question that was also uh, quite common for Matthias. Um, so uh, I have a general question about adsorption into small ultra micropores. Mm -hmm. Do you know of any methods to characterize materials with a pore size of 0.4 nanometers? Yeah, that is a very difficult question. The, uh, when I, I was at the Chiba, I studied, but the, uh, at this moment, several the group, the study, oh, for example, Hideki doing a little bit, the hydrogen absorption. Hydrogen absorption at the 77 Kelvin using the Feynman Hughes potential together with the quantum simulation. Then the having the some the relatively nice the the uh, giving a nice information on poor structures because the hydrogen the even at seven seven Kelvin the behave as a quanta a little bit la large compared to with the classical molecules. Then the, but the, of course, smaller than nitrogen, then it works. And also apply the quantum molecular simulation, then the, to get the uh, good, the pore size, the distribution. That should become uh, some good method. And also uh, some people challenge to the CO2 absorption at ambient temperature, then also apply the uh, molecular simulation. But the uh, CO2 case, the of course, as can be absorbed in very small ultra micropores, but the uh, just on the strongly interacted CO2 is absorbed. So the a little bit difficult for get the average or total of the information on the ultra micropores. Probably the hydrogen absorption or once the Hideki the did in Chiba, the neon absorption should be better, but the neon is very expensive. Then at this moment, not so good method but qualitatively CO2 absorption at ambient temperature, then you can compare with the uh, some sample, the absorption isom for the different, the pores, different nanoporous carbons. Then you can get qualitative difference in ultra micropores. Sorry, I cannot give you a, exact answer. I think you gave a nice perspective uh, of, of also the challenges. Uh, mm -hmm. I have one last question um, uh, before we move on to the second part of your talk. This comes from uh, um, Susanna Kotovac uh, Atlachi. Oh. I'm sorry if I uh, got your name wrong. Um, so do you think there might be ways to find uh, super catalysts with the recently discovered nanomaterials, which could be a better substitute for the uh, ammonia synthesis. Hmm. Yeah, we we did not try, but the recently uh, some of the Lucerne system showed the relatively nice ammonia synthesis was observed, and of course, ammonia synthesis using very small pore should occur even without comp compression conditions, without high pressure, but we didn't try. And la later, I will show another example. Thank you. Excellent. I think uh, we could, uh, I have a couple of more questions. I will keep them for the end of the talk, uh, but we could now proceed. Oh, sorry. Very sorry. It takes a long time. I no, 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 no worries. That is a... 
<laughs> Your country should come to the d o n No, this is、okay. this is the big advantage of these、uh, techniques. So no one is going to come and occupy this room. So please proceed. Oh, okay. Thank you very much.、Yeah. So I want to continue. So from now, I want to show you、uh, our recent some progress, the、uh, which is associated with the absorption on the carbon nanopores carbons. Firstly, I want to show you very briefly water absorption, and next I want to show you the selective isotope molecular absorption, hydrogen and deuterium, and action isotope. And then the impor super high pressure effect, which is associated with the question and the partial breaking of the coulombic law and confined ions, which is not directly associated with the、uh, absorption storage, but absorption is partially associated. And the later, I will show you the. We are just recently、uh, studying the,、uh, the some separation, not the typical separation, but the、uh, some new type of separation issue using the nano windows in graphene. I want to today show you one theoretical one, not the experimental one. Experimental one already we have new results, but the、uh, we didn't publish then. Today I don't the I I cannot the talk. The collaborators, so many、uh, collaborators、uh, supported these the、uh, works in Japan and also the United States, France and UK and Spain and also Australia and Italy and po the Poland and something. Thank you very much, the our collaborators. At first, I want to show you water absorption on hydrophobic porous carbons, but this is a little bit the old the subject. But the、uh, still we don't have the exact understanding. Why? Because the interaction potentials, interaction of water, is very very unique. Here I will show you the、uh, some table of the unique、uh, interaction, in, intermolecular interaction of the argon and CO and ammonia. These are polar molecules, but even the ammonia representative the、uh, polar molecules interaction main intermolecular interaction. Come from dispersion interaction because minus thirteen, the electrostatic is about a half minus six. But the water case, the dispersion interaction only minus five, but the electrostatic interaction three times larger than dispersion interaction minus sixteen. So coming from the Electrostatic, so-called hydrogen bonding interactions, so the very very different from other molecules, even the representative polar molecules. So hydrogen is very very unique. So the often we distinguish the molecule, the solid is the like the water or dislike water. Using the contact angle, the measurement. So contact angle shows the hydrophobicity or hydrophilicity. If the this contact angle is larger than the eighteenth、uh, non-wetting, how about the carbons? The carbon contact angle of the carbon is about ninety. Not exact value, the、uh, because this the contact angle is very at the environment sensitive, so not so exact measurement. Once the、uh, some person I forgot the name, but the,、uh, the they measure the contact angle of water on graphite in ultra high vacuums, but still highly evaporate, not so reproducible, not so good. But anyway, around 
So rather hydrophobic surface, not the perfect the hydrophobic. But here I will show you all the data. This is the uh, water absorption ice sand on active carbon fibers without oxidation, but of course some slight amount of hydro, the slight amount of the surface functional group as a function of the poor widths. For example, this A20 samples, the suddenly absorption start around here. Then nearly 0.9 gram water is absorbed and then not so dissolved and then showing very remarkable absorption hysteresis. But at this, at first, almost no absorption, hydrophobic, but suddenly hydrophilic behavior. So this is a very questionable. So this comes from the cluster formation of the water. At first, water has, does not form the cluster, but uh, at the appropriate at the ap appropriate the relative pressure, they form the cluster formation. But I don't they still understand the how the cluster start at the beginning. I don't understand. Then the uh, when this work was done in Chiba, the Tomo Oba, now he's the still his work in the Chiba. The, he evaluate the interaction potentials, molecule molecule interaction, and molecules the carbon wall interaction using these the symmetric clusters. Then he obtained very interesting the total potential profiles for molecules in clusters. If the uh, single molecules have the not so interact attractive force interaction potential very tiny because the carbon surface not the perfect the uh, hydrophobic hydrophobicity they don't have then slightly the attractive but once the water molecules form optimize the they combine each other with hydrogen bonding highly the they got very strong high stability, they have this kinds of very high, the stable, highly stable state. And this is the reason. So the, if the, at the beginning, without the cluster formation, they cannot enter, but the, the with the cluster formation, water, water associate each other, they got the uh, a very great intermolecular interaction stability and also weak interaction and also they for they form the uh, almost complete the hydrogen bonding state so the cluster lose the electrostatic nature then they behave the real the neutral molecules they are just as suddenly the they are start they are start ad absorbed in very small pores, but this is not capillary condensations. This is very important. Once one of PhD student, the Nakamura, Miss, Mrs. Nakamura studied the, this work. He measured the absorption isom, changing the waiting time for measurement. Five minutes for one point, for example, 16 hours, for one point, so not for humanic measurements. So very, very uh, not so good. So always, always I must say very sorry for Nakamura-san something. But very important results was obtained because the very quick measurements, the absorption branch here, but with the waiting for a long time, this absorption branch shift to left, but the desorption branch doesn't change. This means desorption branch give the uh, equilibrium information, 
but this absorption branch come from the non-equilibrium the process. Then we plotted the, this, the desorption uh, hysteresis behavior, and not so real good the scientific linear plot, but the uh, very, very brief, some qualitative estimation. If the, we want to get the, uh, this, the absorption branch must overlap, we must wait for a long time to get the uh, coincide of the both the desorption and desorption branches. We need, must wait for each point more than 2000 years. So impossible. That means this, the desorption branch, according to the simulations, the water molecules, as already mentioned, for the clusters, clusters are very stable. Those clusters form the aggregated structure. Those aggregated structure are also very, very stable. This, the total energy difference, the almost continuous water stable structure is less than two kilojoule per mole something, very small. Then the, they form the uh, very stable, non-equilibrium structure. So water is very, very unique absorption behavior. And very recently, we observed very unique behavior on the nano diamonds. Here, I will show you TEM image, the uh, not so large, but the inside we can observe the real, the uh, cubic form of the nano diamonds, but the uh, outermost surface is coated with the graphene-like structure. Between the graphene-like structure and the core nanodiamonds, these nanodiamonds around three to four nanometers, the, there are ultra micropores and water are absorbed at ambient conditions. Then they don't they are not to be dissolved at 300 degrees, even in vacuo. Then those water work for the absorption site. So they show the very unique behavior. So water is still very mysterious for me. So I, I want to continue the water absorption but the uh, very difficult to get the fund for fundamental study. Then often we ask the some colleague, could you do this kinds of tiny, tiny subject, but not necessarily tiny. Okay, I want to move on the uh, selective isotope molecular absorption. The, uh, this is the uh, quantum molecular receiving effect and theoretically, the Wienicke, the Delft, the physicist, the Delft University, De Delft University of Technology, the uh, published this very interesting paper, the quantum saving is possible in the single carbon nanotubes because hydrogens more the fluctuate and showing the uh, more behave as they have the large molecular size then the hydrogen and deuterium should be separate. Then the Carl Johnson, the uh, Pittsburgh, the very actively studied using the uh, very advanced, the theoretical method, then gave the very good these uh, predictions. Then in my group, the Hideki, the wanted to start this work when he was PhD start, student, then he gave the uh, experimental evidence together with the quantum simulations. Then we published these kinds of the uh, papers using these materials together with theory. Then the quantum, the molecular receiving for hydrogen isotopes, uh, now the uh, uh, evidence experimentally. And now we are very, very actively studied theoretically very much. 
very qualitatively, for example, the, uh, here there's some extent of quantum fluctuation uh, I show. This is evaluated by Dubois wavelengths. For example, 20 Kelvin boiling temperature of H2, the such a Dubois wavelengths 0.3 nanometer, deuterium D2 0.13 nanometers, very different if the uh, absorption in 0.5 or 0.7 nanometer case, this difference cannot be neglected. Then Hideki the, uh, observed this kinds of very great difference on single carbon nanopons at 20 kelvins, smaller deuterium is more absorbed, but this difference becomes slight with increasing the temperature but still meaningful at 77 Kelvin. The, here, the, such a difference is very uh, typically shown in simulation by, done by Hideki, and this is not carbon, alpha 4 5 In this case, left side quantum hydrate, hydrogen fluctuate systems, you can see three hydrogen is absorbed on this cross-sectional view, but Classical hydrogen, four. So one molecule is more in classical case, but the, in the other case at low temperature, hydrogen the classical, then the less hydrogen is absorbed. Very, very uh, unique absorption behaviors are observed for hydrogen isotope. Even the mixed gas, the hydrogen and deuteriums uh, also the differential absorption is observed for ordinary activated carbon fibers. Then now we are interested in the more heavier molecules, oxygen 18 or oxygen 16s. Uh, oxygen 18s are very important. In atmosphere, 0.2 percent content, content is 0.2 percent. But this action 18 is very, very uh, essentially requested for medical application. PET, positron emission tomography, use this action 18. But the, uh, at this moment, for example, Japanese company, for example, they built 37 meter the tower, distillation tower, and it takes 10 months for distillation using the selectivity 1.003. So we want to have more better systems. Then at first we wonder the quantum molecule seven can be applicable to action isotope. Then using the quantum, the uh, Feynman Hibbs potential, we estimated the fluctuation difference, such a difference, very, very tiny, 0.02 percent difference, and potential interaction potential difference, 0.07 kelvins, negligible. So very, very difficult. But the, uh, I, a uh, little bit, I'm uh, sticky, so the, I like this theory, but I'm not a theoretician, then we should challenge, anyway, we should challenge, then we measure the action isotope, the absorption. Then we found a very uh, great difference. Then we ask the uh, specialist, the Carl Johnson at the Pittsburgh, that he, around one year, the, he found corrective nuclear quantum motion theory should be good. Then the, this should be applicable to other the isotope molecules. Then this is the result. The last D4A I the presented, carbide-derived carbon at low temperature, 100 Kelvin, 112 Kelvin, 140 Kelvin, at the beginning, very high selectivity, action 18 and 16 is observed. And still around here, 100 Kelvins, the 
still around the two, with decreasing the temperature, the more higher, the higher selectivity is observed. Why we uh, measured the low temperature? Because the in Japan, the infrastructure of the natural gas, natural gas here, the is available. The boiling temperature of methane, 112 kelvins. If we establish the construct, the new type of the engineering, some plant, something, then the, this energy can be applicable to this, the separations. And what is carbide-derived carbons? Here is the model structure. The carbide-derived carbon mainly consists of the carbi-graphene structure, and they very narrow range. They have this kinds of three-shaped pole, but they have the in poles some very narrow range. Probably this very small in neck parts should work for the good the selectivity. We at this moment we consider. Then the, for example, at one minute, the high selectivity, 100 selectivity at the beginning, but five minutes around five something with the time gradually decrease. But other the method, for example, nitrogen monoxide distillation, membrane this the isotope exchange something, 0.1.04 something, not really applicable one, but the uh, this is very high. High selectivity is observed. And also here I will show you the component dependence on the selectivity, 70% uh, or nearly 5%, even the 5% still very high value at the initial stage is observed. So we assume 0.2% should be probably okay, but some of the uh, improvements in the experimental system should be necessary, but the, uh, at this moment, we uh, just uh, submit the, our paper. And also, the, this is also applicable to other isotopes, methane carbon-13 and carbon-12 methane, also separable. Here, I will show you the results. This is not the selectivity, the, uh, the molar fractions, the at the, be the, at the beginning, the uh, molar fraction, the, the carbon-13, the uh, 9.8, then they become 23, 23 something. So it works for the carbon methane and carbon-12 separations. So in future, the, uh, this should be applicable to the engineering world, I hope. But still, probably many fundamental studies should be necessary. The next one in poor high pressure effect. Uh, I'm very interested in if the, uh, we can exchange very great the chemical plant into with the very small nanochemical plant, nanoscale of the materials. That should be very energy saving and very safe. That should be very, very good in future. We have the three examples in the some potassium iodide and sulfur and methane hydrate. But today, the, I want to show you the sulfur case. This is a little bit old, old the work. The uh, representative, the sulfur solid, consists of eight member sulfur ring. Then they have a closed structure, so representative insulator. But if we apply the huge pressure, more than 
90 gigapascal, the, this eight member ring dissociate to form the two, this, the two dimensional structure and showing the metallic property. And theoretical one, the study shows if the single strain, the uh, structure also shows metallic properties. The our case, the we just evaporate the sulfur in vacuum, then spontaneously, for example, and this is double roll, this is double roll carbon nanotube, carbon and the carbon, uh, carbon and the carbon. Here you can see the sulfur. This is just a schematic instruction. The sulfur structure, zigzag structure, you can show. So the sulfur form the completely uh, one dimensional zigzag form, and, but 0.6 nanometer double wall carbon nanotube, almost a straight sulfur chain is observed. And also we can observe considerably nice TM image. We can see sulfur. This means the sulfur should be electrical conductive. And also we can observe the synchrotron X-ray diffraction. For example, this comes from the completely linear chain in single roll carbon nanotube. This, the peak corresponding to sulfur sulfur bonding distance. This is slightly larger than the uh, bonding distance observed in the sulfur compound. And the this is just a powdered form electrical resistivity, not a single row of carbon nanotube data. That's a very difficult still. Then, but the uh, sulfur included doped to the single row carbon nanotube resistivity gives a very low compared with without sulfur. Then the, this indicates sulfur should be metallic and Rama, data, Rama spectroscopic data the uh, also support metallic property of sulfur. Then we don't apply 90 gigapascal, just evaporate sulfur in vacuum, but the, high, the very unique structure, which is produced by under the 90 gigapascal is produced in single roll carbon nanotube. So impure pressure works for this case. Okay. At this moment, we are just applying this the uh, principle to organic high pressure synthesis. Already, we have the good results. And next one, the partial breaking of the Coulombic law in confined ions. This is the liquid phase adsorption issue. This is also associated with energy issues. The uh, supercapacitors are now are very, very important for storing of the intermittent energy produced by the renewal energy, the sunshine, for example. Then how to increase the capacity, something. Ordinarily, in order to get high the capacitance, the electrodes uh, consist of the activated carbons having high surface area and also not so the excellent but high, relatively high electrical conductivity. Then activated carbons are used as electrodes for supercapacitors, but no understanding, no the good understanding for the ions confined in carbons. So here I show the how the important of the supercapacitors. This slide is produced by Yuri Gogochi's group. The ions, I'm interested in the confined ions. I started work the very old times. The ones we observed, we found 
the ions confined in small pores acted carbons 0.7 nanometers. The rubidium ions, the hydration numbers decrease compared with bulk. So the, we say, so we said partial dehydration occurs under the highly confined state, confined situation. Then we move on the confined organic ions. In con confined ionic ions, the, in such a case, we use the tetraethyl ammonium. In this case, the, uh, these ions in highly uh, the confined situation, they showed the sun orientational structure, very unique orientational structure. At that time, we use reverse Monte Carlo aided X-ray scattering. But I, I was asked by the uh, Patrice, the uh, supercapacitor scientist, and also Yuri Gogochi to support the, this, the uh, supercapacitor work. Then we started nearly 10 years ago. Then, then the, uh, we used ionic liquid EM5 TFSI. We confined in the carbon pores. Then we measured X ray scattering, synchrotron. Then we applied the uh, hybrid reverse Monte Carlo simulations. <clears throat> Ordinarily, Iwan's structure is very, very ordered. As shown here, this is NaCl around an ion, Cl minus around the first, the coordination cell, the sodium plus charge plus ion cation occupies. And secondary, the second coordination cells minus the an ion occupy. This is coulombic ordering. We wonder this structure should change by strong confinement. We so examine the confined the ionic liquid in one nanometer and 0.7 nanometer. 0.7 nanometer almost single layered ionic liquid confinement one nanometer almost double layer confinement, then compared each other, uh, <coughs> each other, sorry. We applied synchrotron X-ray scattering, but we just only, we can get one dimensional information. Then we applied hybrid reverse Monte Carlo simulation using Leonard Jones potential and electrostatic interactions to get the most plausible structure. This is not the exactly accurate structure, plausible structure, but once we can get plausible structure, we can obtain the anion, anion, cation, 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 anion configurations, informations. A more detailed information we can obtain. This is original of the data, the bulk crystal, bulk liquid, confined the EMI TFSI, this very broad peak, but the change from bulk one. But the, we can analyze after some several collections, then we can get useful information. Well, this is the uh, bulk EMFI TFSI liquid case. This is the, and compared with experiment and simulations. Then the TFSI anion, anion, and cation, cation, some of the, the, the radial distribution functions we compared. Here, I will show you anion, anion structure because anion has more electrons, more reliable, the more larger electron, the X-ray scattering cross-section, then the, at first we start from the anion, anion structure analysis. 
Then we move on the cation, 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 anion structure. Here, I just want to show anion, anion structure. This is the bulk case. Black shows the total, and the blue shows the uh, anion, anion, TFSI, TFSI. The here, the no, the uh, no positive peak. No positive peak means around the. This is around the anion coordinations. The almost no anions. Negative peak means no anions. But the if we confined in the TFSI EMFI in 0.7 nanometers, the uh, we can observe this negative peak uh, just a little bit upward shift, the change. Then we counted the real number of the anion, the coordinated, the occupy in this first the coordination, the shell around the anions. The, this is the results around the anions in 0.7 nanometer case, nearly 20, 25%, nearly 25 to 5% anions occupy this first nearest neighbor shells. But in bulk case, very tiny, nearly five something due to the collisions. So very unique be behavior are uh, observed. Then we examine the structure. This is the uh, just a model case. This is graphene walls. Here is anion. In such a case, this points the positive charge is induced the this carbons. And also here, this here, this is just a corresponding position. Also, the uh, positive charge is induced. So if negative charge inside here, the in the carbon walls, the ne positive charge is uh, induced because carbon is electrical conductive. If negative ion, anion here, electron in the carbon walls, the go, run away from here, then instead positively charged points appear. Then positive charge interact with this negative anions, then stabilize. So negative, negative anion, anion, Repulsive interaction, for example, the plus 12 kilojoule, but plus induced plus and negative anion interaction, minus 20 kilojoule per mole. Then image charge and this negative charge, attractive interactions, very important. Then the anion, anion can associate in very small pore. This kinds of the behavior is predicted by theoretician. If the a very small pore in highly conductive space, the wall the should have the image charge, then uh, the uh, some super ionic states according to Korchenev should form. This should be such a super ionic state. Then the a certain this the uh, be behavior we apply the electric voltage using this kind of small the polarization equipment the in situ for in situ synchrotron X-ray measurement. In such a case, we apply plus two volt more the uh, occupations from twenty five to thirty four. And minus two volt, uh, the, on the other hand, we can observe the decrease, smaller the occupations. Then the, this image charge effect is evidenced, we uh, believe. 
then this is very important because the if we the uh, design very small pore wall pores, the even the negative negative anion anion can associate uh, each other to form the compact structure. Compact structure mean highly dense the ion the storage. Then this the in future we should apply this principle to produce the new type of the energy ion storage. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Okay, I last one I must quickly finish five minutes. The last one, the highly efficient air separation possibility through nano windows in graphene's. The uh, this the uh, work was done with the Nando. He moved to United United States. Probably you know better than I. The David the wrote the very short note of the uh, separation. Advanced separation is necessary to save energy. So new type of the membrane is very important. But at this moment, the preparation of membranes are very difficult. Then if possible, we want to apply the graphene to very high the separations. Then at first we just apply the theoretical work to design. Here, this is the uh, theoretically thermodynamically stable, the uh, nano windows in ambient conditions, some OH and some O something, and react with H2O and oxygen. So some surface oxygen at the uh, this window frame. Then the, we change this, this size then we evaluate penetration the rate using model of these windows. We say the window, not the pore, because the, we cannot the store the molecules here. Just a penetration occur, a very different function the nano window has from the pores. Then ordinarily we say, nano windows. In real case, for example, single roll carbon nanophone, we donate nanoscale window. Very recently, uh, we are just writing the paper, uh, the phthalocyanin molecular catalyst we put here. In such a case, nano window size regulated nearly 0.4 to 0.45 nanometers. Then we can uh, the, uh, control the density of the window size. So those, the, te the technology should be applicable in future. <clears throat> but here we just applied molecular dynamics, then the evaluate the calculation rate, the uh, penetration rate the, through the uh, this the window. Here we just examine the six size of the nano windows from 0.26 to 0.38 nanometer. This size is just this the uh, this spherical the size because we just assume uh, someone is not spherical, but the uh, ordinary some spherical molecules just uh, pe penetrate. Then the, at this moment, we use this spherical model for evaluation of the effective, the nano window size from 0.257 nanometer to 0.378. These are some dynamically stable at ambient conditions. Then the, here we, uh, compare the oxygen and nitrogen argon, the permeation rate, the even the 0.273, this one can permeate, but the uh, oxygen, depending on the model, the uh, size 0.30 nanometer, but the uh, this 0.27 nanometers 
this oxygen almost only not necessarily only but slight nitrogen but almost oxygen permeate a very high selectivity is obtained because the in this case this the window frames are moving the uh, some local vibrations if they the move here and here so a kind of concerted motion just match with the permeation actions so this size become more larger then action uh, welcome to permeate then only action can permeate even the very small window then we evaluated the absolute the uh, permeation rate at the uh, room temperature but compare with the present to the uh, membranes so this is just a theory too much high but anyway very great possibilities <laughs> okay i want to finish then the uh, absorption science are very very uh, strong very very uh, important for creation of the sustainable society and here i will show you some applications but the other people knows very well <laughs> and also i want to mention last stage absorption related area is highly interdisciplinary so we should welcome the younger generation from the different the scientific area even the very very different the different angle for the science is a very very helpful for the open the new window for absorption science so i dearly welcome and also i just uh, show there should be many many routes for getting the uh, peak science okay many many financial support i should appreciate and these are my present colleagues uh the hideki this is my secretary very efficient always i ask her too much and many uh, colleagues uh, work very well but at this moment we are very unhappy we should ourselves confine our form not the nano pose thank you very much thank you thank you very much kutsumi that was a it's a very broad overview of all the places where carbon mm. surface sorry for used. a long time <laughs> no not at all and thank you for uh, staying uh, i have a, a couple of questions uh, that were left uh, during the break and I, i will start with them um so one comes from um uh, ayat sakar Uh, and he he asks uh, about the adsorption in layered structures uh, i think he goes back to the bet method is not giving good information about the porosity of these materials mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah, what sure. what approaches would you suggest that he should try so bet can be applicable to mesopore systems more than the probably a two nanometer just a the very critical but the basically more than the 2 nanometer pores because the more nitrogen molecules form the more layers but the uh, smaller one not then at this moment in my talk i recommend the subtracting pore effect method the because we must the remove the additional absorption the occurs by enhance the interaction potentials then if you apply the bt method in such a case the you should you should use the relative pressure region around the 0.0 ten to minus 2 0.01 or 0.001 to 0.05 something less than 0.05 region you should apply vt plot 
in such a case, the you are evaluated BT surface area is close to the considerably close the close to the correct value. Right. But if you use the subtracting for effect method, the more easy, but some reference data are necessary. Okay. Excellent. So the next question comes from Bubesh. Um, uh, does water condensation happen in all hydrophilic mesoporous materials as long as there is multilayering? Mm -hmm. Does the material property have any role to play? So uh, what is the role of the material itself in creating uh, condensation in mesoporous materials? Me mesoporous materials? Mes mesoporous materials, probably even the layer structures, the uh, direction of hydrogen is different. If you use the hydrophilic mesoporous silica, for example, the the hydrogen, the monolayers, the hydrogen should the attach to the surface functional group OH, then monolayer structure is different from the hydrophobic. Oh, sorry, just a moment. The uh, do do you observe the monolayer formation on the hydrophobic mesoporous systems? ordinarily very difficult according to my experience. If the pore width is larger than the five nanometers, hydrophobic case, the absorption start, the relative pressure around the 0.98 something. At the same time, the vapor condense on the wall of the equipments, then absorption measurements are very difficult. So the mesoporous system having the less than five nanometer case, very similar to the absorption in hydrophobic carbon micropores, but the relatively large mesoporous the systems Hydrophobic, having hydrophobic one, not layering occurs, I think. Did you observe the layering on the hydrophobic mesoporous systems? Ordinarily very difficult. If you want to observe the such a layering water layer, water absorbed layer on <coughs> hydro, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> Sorry, hydrophobic <coughs> pore systems, <coughs> high pressure water. <coughs> Just a moment. <coughs> hydro pressure, hydro high high pressure water is necessary. <laughs> One example is highly hydrophobic zeolite case. We cannot observe the water absorption ice sand we need to apply the high pressure water vapor. Then the water, the hesitate to be absorbed. So, uh, sorry, yeah, thank I, you. Yeah, no, okay. no, I think, I think that kind of gives a, a perspective. Uh, I had a question. Um, when uh, you were showing the separation of uh, the oxygen isotopes, yeah. So these are um, uh, the, the quantum sieving effects are mainly diffusion related rather than thermodynamic related. Did I understand that correctly? Mm, okay, sorry, I didn't mention exactly. Uh, that one come from the new mechanism. The uh, Carl Johnson the uh, found the, such a new mechanism. But principle is the. Quantum of the molecular sieving, the JASA target is isolated hydrogen or deuterium molecules. So they are fluctuate in isolated state. But the, for example, oxygens, the oxygen oxygen interaction is more stronger than hydrogen. They form the some assembly structure, solid like structure in confined situation. So they 
move then the simultaneously, just like solid phonons. Mm -hmm. The solid vibra phonon, phonon vibration depends on the weight, atomic weight. Like that, the oxygen form the uh, solid-like structure, then the molecular weight difference the, uh, gives a different absorption behavior. That's a reason. So, so it's not a mechanism. kinetic. So it's yeah. not a kinetic effect, but a thermodynamic effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the yeah thermodynamic also kinetic, I think. But in kinetic point, we didn't understand the exactly yet. Because when you showed the um, the compositions as a function of time, mm -hmm. uh, as the time increased, the compositions actually came down to what was being mm -hmm. fed. So I was wondering whether it is the kinetic effect that we are seeing. The selectivity being very high for mm -hmm. a short period of time yeah, yeah. and eventually comes to almost one at long periods. Yeah, yeah, very good question. We still we have a question, but the at this moment we we consider the some carbon, the car, in particular carbide derived carbon, has the uh, inner part a very small pores, nearly 0.5 nanometer neck parts. The real content capacity, not so much. That 0.5 very small pore, theoretically some evidence, the uh, guaranteed very high selectivity, not 100, but the, uh, so the very small pore selectively, the oxygen 18 should be firstly form the some assembly. Mm. But after compression, the selectivity decline the, at this moment we consider such a kind of the uh, process. Excellent. I don't think I have any further questions either on YouTube or here. So I think this is a good time to uh, uh, just close the session. Um, so if you could just stop sharing, Katsumi, I will oh. take over for just a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much anyway. The, yep. uh, for long, talk, long my talk, you are very, uh, Nice patience. Thank you very much. In yeah, thank particular, you. Yeah, Arvind must reorganize this. Thank you very much. And also Nick also. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kasumi. Just uh, hold on for one minute, please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you can stop sharing your screen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Just a second. I will just make one announcement. Well, uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Katsumi, for this uh, fantastic talk, a very a nice overview, and also uh, uh, for taking all the uh, questions that came across. Uh, so this is just a reminder for the upcoming um, uh, webinar. This would be delivered by Professor Stefan Karskel on uh, switchability and ultra high porosity in metal organic frameworks. This is scheduled for the 13th of May at 10 a.m. New York time. So please do join us. Mm -hmm. uh, following that, we have uh, two more presentations for this um, webinar series. I would give a talk on the 14th and uh, Camille Petit uh, will talk again on uh, the 18th at the same time on uh, challenges in uh, adsorbent development. So I thank you again and, uh, for attending and uh, please look forward to uh, the video that will be posted on YouTube at a later time for your convenience. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.